Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more of our Russia campaign for Europa Universalis 4. France has entered into a royal marriage with their new ally, Lithuania. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that's not good. That's not good at all. Well, I, I, I did spend some time thinking about what to do with this Livonian order thing, and I think I have a solution. Um... We'll just have to feed back a province or two from Lithuania before we actually, uh... Before we can actually vassalize them. As long as we don't give them too much land, they should not all of a sudden decide that they're not willing to do it. I mean, their base tax is so small. And the formula is actually simpler than you might think. So when you do this offer vassalization thing, you see how it says Muscovite base tax compared to Livonian, plus 30. It used to be, um, they've changed this formula a few times, but it's like, um, you know what, I can't, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. You take your base tax minus the square of their base tax, multiply that by, um, 60 I think it is, and then subtract 90 from the difference from the total. It's a, it's a really weird formula, but basically you take this number here and then multiply it by their total base tax, squared. Divide it by, sorry. Anyway, it's on the wiki, but it's an annoying formula. I wish that they would just tell you, show the tooltip for the formula in the game, that'd be ideal. I'm really just not sure if, if I want to expand over here or not. I think I do. This is wrong territory. And Uzbek is, um... Attacker controls Kurgan. I mean, he is winning, but... Maybe we just attack Kazan. We could force them into release Perm. And then just annex Perm. You are allied with, uh... Hara and the Timurids. Timurids are down here-ish. You are... Unlikely, I think. Ramia hates you. Golden Horde is threatened. So you probably have military access. We'd have to fight Kara. If you wanted to attack Kazan. Kara's got 35,000 men, and Kazan has... Only 12. How great would it be, though, to lure Kara all the way up into the Russian winter? <laughs> It'd be glorious. Why do we only get one rival? I feel like this game just wants me to sit on my haunches and do nothing. You discovered Sabir. Yet again, another province we can't actually colonize. Why do we keep getting things revealed that are in Uzbek? Reveal this one. You have a chance of discovering Terry Incognita and adjacent to you, like, every turn. Every month. Okay, you can invest in diplomatic technology. Oh, goody. Great efficiency is actually pretty good. Lithuania is on level 5 technology for military, as is Poland. Kazan's at 4. Kar is at 4. You know what? We're not going to take Disorder. Well, it is for just one year. And I am really enjoying having high prestige. Yeah, let's let's uh, let's go ahead and ignore their demands. We'll accept the revolt risk for a year. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. It's only going to affect the provinces that already have revolt risk. And it's going to immediately start to tick down. Every month it'll go down a little bit. Disorder 2.0. I think. Ah, uh, no. Never mind. That's not how it works. Apparently this one is a flat modifier. Which will go away next year. It doesn't tick down, but it's only a year. Build some more temples. Not in that one.
I should also be trying to build them on the coast, come to think of it. If we built two on the coast, we could get another, um, another trade ship. Nogai has declared war on their new enemy, Uzbek. Now Nogai versus Uzbek. Oh man, that move for that damn gold mine. I am really wanting this gold mine. Look at that de just delicious production. The Nogai. At war with Uzbek. Royal marriage. Kara. Currently at war with the Mamluks. And losing. Kara's going to be so distracted. I think we can take Kazan right now. Let's go for it. We'll wait for level 6 military tech and then we're going to do it. The reasoning, reasoning being that we'll be, have a, another tactics level over Kara if they do come. And Kazan is uh, also only level 4, so we'd have tactics advantage. It's just stars in the sun are aligning. Of course, that'll also cause them to lose their war with Uzbek. Which kind of makes us like pseudo-allies. I don't necessarily want Uzbek to get any stronger, but... Eh. Whatever, you know. I'm gonna wait for that disorder to go away, maybe? Wait for July? We have two diplomats doing nothing. Hmm. Top off relations with you. We will... We already have you topped off. You're my ally. Might as well top off relations with Poland. Make sure we decide when Lithuania happens. Go ahead and take our level 6 military tech. We'll upgrade one of our unit types. Oh, apparently it wasn't those. It was the uh, cavalry get better. So we get to uh, go from... Whichever one we had before with three pips up to three, four, five pips. Great. Very nice. And we still have our amazing general. Okay, what kind of cast of spell do we have anyway? I do think we're going to wait for July. And I am tempted also to boost stability up. Getting rid of that other 2% revolt risk would be really nice. Let's, um... We already capped out relations with... Austria... Well... Let's improve relations with Sweden. Try to keep them out of a coalition. Don't care about them. We'll improve relations with Norway. Actually, uh, yeah, that's fine. For a couple months, and then it's time to... Um, Denmark will cede Holland. Denmark will pay ducats. So, Sweden won. That was a separate piece, too. We're still at war with Denmark. We're at full maintenance. It's almost July. We'll wait until June, bring back a diplomat. Probably the one from... Norway. Man, the AI seems really interested in wasting their diplomat on... Sweden is trying to reciprocate. No! Our general died right before going to war. No! We needed you. A glorious 3-4. Alright. Pomerania is at war with the Teutonic Order. A little bit further away than really matters to us. Well, we have to wait for 50 military points now and just really, really hope we get a good leader. Take like the uh, the theologian, I think. The nation of Poland, your faithful allies, requesting that you come to their aid in the Polish conquest of Danzig against the Teutonic Order. This is a war that they have started. The Teutonic Order is allied with Sweden and the Livonian Order. I don't know that Sweden actually is protecting them, are they? This is an offensive call to arms, so... If you were going to protect the Livonian Order, I would have expected you to have already said yes. We will not introduce church taxes. We've learned a long, long time ago that that extra national revolt risk for 8% tax modifier is just not worth it. Same thing with this thing. I mean, 
unless you really need the missionary strength. I'm not going to pass it. Okay, so the great thing about being in a war with Poland is that if we then declare war on Lithuania, Poland can't help them. But Lithuania is now allied with France. So, there's that. We accept. Poland has raised war taxes. Mecklenburg has honored their military alliance with Poland. Lithuania has honored it as well. Alright, never mind. We're allies in a war now. We can't backstab Lithuania. And we are actually at war with the Livonian Order. Hmm. Military alliance honor. I really don't need a pop-up when I honor my own, own war. Interesting. Okay, well, that kind of changes my thoughts here. I think we need to try to swoop in and vassalize the Livonian Order. Unfortunately, we did end up at war, so we didn't get our mission, which is too bad, because we're getting pretty close. Achieve religious unity, take Smolensk. Why would you give me a mission um, when it's with somebody that I'm currently allied with? Who knows? Still, I do think that this would be a, a pretty good war with Kazan, so we need to make that happen. Disorder has expired, thank goodness. Let's, um... Sweden has honored, entered a military alliance, but they haven't joined the war. It's just us against the little orders. We need to make sure that we get there first. Very important. Very important. Beeline, go. I want to send uh, just infantry, just so that it's nice and cheap. They are at level 2 fort level, so we can do that. Now, I learned a little trick from watching DDR Jake. When you move into hostile territory, you ever notice how you immediately suffer a tick of attrition? If, you, if your army stops in enemy territory, you suffer a tick of attrition. But if your army is moving through territory into another province, you don't suffer the attrition because you're just passing by. But if you are in enemy territory, and then you then issue a stop command, you don't suffer any attrition. And so, notice how 2,000 men can now immediately begin their siege, instead of having to wait until the next month, so that they can tick up and be back into reinforced. Plus, it saves you 40 men. So it's kind of a annoying, I, I just think it's really annoying, actually, that you have to pay attention to that crap um, in the first place, but... Now, we could get some prestige and some military strength here, so I I'm always on the eye, looking out for army tradition. Let's go ahead and hire our one dude. Oh, yay! He's a 334! He's pretty damn good! I don't need a pop-up about that, though. And they've got a fairly sizable army there. It's hard to count up the total number of regiments. I don't think it's going to matter too much. Let's just put our guy in charge and go for it. I would love to be the guy that stack wipes that. But looks like Lithuania is going to probably beat us to the punch. Yep, they did. Well, damn. Still, um... We'll send some of the army down there and go have some fun. The rest of it will go position over by Kazan again. They have a five fire leader. We cannot beat him there. He's going to plock. We'll scare him off and then go. His total size is four. We're committing nine. That's pretty ideal. We should flank like crazy. And stack wipe. And this is the uh, the capital. Unfortunately, because we are we have military access with like every province, there's gonna be no looting to do. Which is sad. Let's go ahead and select army. They actually added in key bindings, by the way. You can press, um, I think it's J. E and J. J selects the siege, P selects the province. I don't know why they chose J, but whatever. That's paradox for you. Anyway, we're going to just leave behind a couple infantry. Maybe we'll leave anything behind a cavalry, too. My guy doesn't have any siege value, and... I want him to be there. 
that's pretty much all we have to commit to that war. Actually, you know what? You don't actually get any money for being the guy that occupies a province. You only get money for looting. So, if we help him siege, that just makes the war end faster, and we really want to make sure that we get Livonian order vassalized. So actually, let's not even help out with the siege. Because I'm going to negotiate direct with the Livonian order, and it's going to cost me some diplomacy points. Let's go ahead and detach a blockade. Hopefully we can make these sieges happen pretty quick. Let's also unappoint our general, because he could die. They're more likely to die when they're appointed. Not that he's likely to die, he's pretty damn young. Protect against Lithuania again, have uh, 33 regiments. Well, considering we can have up to 37 and we only have to train one, I think that sounds like a great idea. Norway will cede two provinces to Sweden and annul their treaties with Denmark. Keep in mind that that takes... it's a 10-year annulment now. So Norway's kind of on their own. Sweden is getting strong. Sweden broke their alliance with the Livonian Order. Well, we expected that. You didn't defend them. You didn't defend the Teutonic Order or the Livonian Order. Which is probably wise. Instead, they're flipping their attention to Pomerania. Now, do we wait for this war to end, or do we just immediately declare war on Kazan? Quarantine it. I think we should boost stability. Still have revolt risk, even with the stability. That just shows you that the revolts... Revolt chance is based on this stupid nationalism. Got our mission. Great. We might be able to vassalize Livonian order separately, which is one siege. That would be ideal. Uzbek has levied war taxes. Uh, you cannot negotiate separate peace between two junior partners in a war. I knew that. It means that if I actually wanted to subjugate them, I'd have to negotiate with the Teutonic Order. Hmm. White peace between Kazan and Uzbek. So we may have just missed our opportunity here. But Kazan, I imagine, has like still no troops at all. No, they have 21,000. What the hell? Why would you white peace if you have 21,000? And Uzbek has 14. I know... I don't understand this game sometimes. Alright, well, um... Hmm... I don't have a claim over here, so... They're not going to give me anything. They're not going to give me the vassalization of Livland. Let's go ahead and say leader may negotiate for us. And then just see if maybe we get lucky. Alright, well I'm going to take a break here though. I do look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching as always. See you soon.